reason uh, I think for these shoe boards that you see is back in the day before we had televisions and radios and contests and events to go to, all we had were publications. Uh, there was a Horseshoe Journal started in 1875 and a, a wheel, um, I'm sorry, Blacksmith and Wheelwright magazine. Now people would write in and they had writers that were talking about different disciplines with the horse and people would write in and uh, describe a shoe to fix a problem with a horse. I think these blacksmiths would read these papers, go in out there in the shop at night and make a duplicate of that shoe that they talked about in that paper. Then after a while he had enough shoes, he just put them together a shoe display board. The reason I say that, traveling through as many barns as I have since the 50s and 60s, I don't see these shoes nailed on the wall in the barn anymore. And you don't really see them on the horses. I think a lot of it was scientific and artistic that they just uh, wanted something to do out there in the shop, see how well they could punch a shoe and uh, dress a shoe up. Your county fairs, your state fairs, your world fairs all had exhibits for stuff like that. The Columbian Expedition in Chicago in 1893, they crowned William Winchin the world's greatest horseshoe. And that exhibit today is in Richmond, Indiana. And the gold medals that he won. That's the only guy in history I've ever heard uh, called the world's greatest horseshoe. But it's a beautiful display he made, amazing uh, price he was offered for it back in that era. But you can go back in time and read these old publications, and this was a pretty uh, popular thing to, to make these shoe boards to display your work. 